योगेन चित्तस्य पदेन वाचा मलम शरीर से च वैद्यकेन योगाकृत प्रब्रह्मणीना पतंजलिम प्राचलिरान तोस्मि तुवे पतंजलिम व्यासम शंकरम च मुनित्रयम कत्र सूत्रस्य भाष्यस्य क्रमादिवरणस्य <coughs> So, we were discussing the 40th Sutra and we also started discussing the 41st Sutra of Samadhi Pada. <coughs> so, in the uh, Sutra number 40, we already mentioned that is Paramanu Parama Mahatvantaha Asya Vasikaraha. So, Asya here means of the mind of a yogi. It's a meaning. Chittasya in that sense. Now, through this practice of dharana, a yogi is able to uh, get complete control in terms of concentration on the grossest and also the subtlest. That's a literal meaning. Now it has something to do with the entire psychology, psychological dynamics of concentration. Uh, the word, the Sanskrit word in uh, 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 it's concentration is ekagrita, means that's the Sanskrit word for concentration. Eka means one, agra means end. I mean, the sharp point of a needle, uh, of any, anything that is sharp, can be called ekagra, means focused. Now, when our mind is blunt, then it is focused on more than one object. As you know, a blunt instrument cannot cut anything. A sharp instrument can cut. So, when our mind is blunt, it won't be able to concentrate on anything. Now, what's the meaning of saying the mind is blunt or is sharp? When we say that our mind is blunt, it means its attraction, its concentration is dissipated. It simultaneously operates through the five channels of perception. It's called Jnana Indriya in Sanskrit. The five senses of perception. The eyes by which we see, the ears by which we hear, the sense of touch, the sense of smell and the sense of taste. So these are the five channels through which mind flows out and connects with various objects in the objective world. So, normally, when we do something, or when we hear something, and we are not able to remember, that's because when we hear, our mind is not fully focused on that. Our mind is also focused on something else. So, there is more than one and one sharp point to the mind. Now, a yogi is able to sharpen his mind. He is able to reduce the bluntness of his mind. Again, this comes with complete self-mastery. It's not that you are interested in something that you are able to concentrate upon something because you have fascinated by the you have a fascination or an attraction for it. No. Whatever you want to concentrate upon, you will be able to focus upon it. Great spiritual teachers will not often remember material things. That's because their mind normally doesn't go towards anything in the objective world. Because they the moment they think of the empirical world, immediately there is the awareness that all these things are changing in permanent realities. So immediately the mind doesn't go very much into that. But 
On the other hand, when a yogi or a spiritual seeker, he uh, reads something, hears something, writes something, or mentally connects with something related to something transcendental, something trans-empirical, something spiritual, immediately he is able to remember. So this is an important point to remember. So Vasikara here means complete self-mastery through concentration. And this becomes possible with regard to the grossest, the, in the objective world, it's called Grahya. And also in the process of cognition, understanding, that is called Grahana, at the level of Indriyas or senses of perception. And also with regard to one's own ego system, that is Asmida, that is called Grihida. So that's, a, that's the, uh, indica that the implication of the coming sutra. Now what happens is, when a yogi is able to uh, concentrate upon the largest and the grossest and also the subtlest, then he covers a huge whole spectrum of objects that he can concentrate upon. And then he reaches the state, he becomes a kshina vritti, that's the meaning here. Kshina vrittehe means of the person whose chitta has become kshina vritta means whose chitta with vrittis completely weakened or neutralized or vrittis uh, completely um, uh, transcended. That's the meaning of kshina vritta. Now, uh, Swami Vivekananda's complete works, uh, you can find uh, he presents a very interesting example, which actually uh, gives a new flashlight into the mystery of our own samskaras, vrittis and actions. He gives the example of uh, of, of, of uh, hitting a ball with a mallet. Say, suppose um, in a room or in a hall, a large number of people are gathered. There is one ball, and each of the each of these people uh, has got a mallet, or a hammer, whatever it is, in his hand and they go on hitting this ball or maybe maybe just one person because when you hit it it bounces back to yourself and you again you hit it so one person also uh, can do that go on hitting the ball uh, let's say in a room with only one window let us say a, a big room you are you have you are hitting a ball with a mallet and go on hitting at some point it could happen that a ball just flies out of the room through the window or the open door only one door is opened now uh, what about the velocity of the nature or the direction of the flight of the ball when it uh, bounces up out uh, out of the room Swamiji says that ball bouncing out of the room is, it corresponds to our present character, vritti, samskara, temperament, personality, whatever it is. And that is the totality or the sum total of all the hits that this ball has received. So, you go on hitting it from different angles. Each of the hit that you do in a way plays a role in deciding the direction into which the ball flies out of the room. You may hit, let us say, 99 times. The 100th hit results in the ball flying out of the room. Now it, it bounces, it hits against the wall comes back, again you hit another, it may hit another wall, another side of the wall, and go on hitting. Now the last hit causes the ball to come to fly out of the room. It is not an independent phenomenon. All the hits that the ball has received have played a role 
in deciding the direction into which that ball flies out of the room similarly our present personality the way we act we think we behave all have been determined by every single hit that our mind or personality has received in each incarnation in each li lifetime so it is something to do with the law of the karma and also the doctrine of reincarnation so what we are right now is the sum total or the totality of what we have been what we have been experiencing what we are doing all this will have something to do with what we are right now at this moment nothing is an accident nothing is isolated if we talk in a particular manner if we behave in a particular manner if we have a particular temperament it's all because of so many samskaras vrittis that have formed that have that that have played an important role it plays a dis, the, the the determining role in uh, molding our personality and character now let us say each life also accumulates a number of vrittis vrittis become samskaras samskar so samskaras become vasanas vasanas means our natural attitude temperament towards a particular action or a quality or an event or a let us say or a behavior pattern and that again decides our sankalpas and that again will decide our action and that action again accumulates new vrittis vasanas and samskaras this goes on in every life cycle so that's an interesting illustration i don't think there is any other illustration in any of the yoga literature where you find such a dramatic and a graphic description of the dynamics of vrittis and samskaras and the roles they play in molding our personality in determining what we ultimately are now all these vrittis become neutralized kshina is not chitta vritti nirodha when you reach chitta vritti nirodha then you become uh, uh, you, you 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 become completely enlightened that is the ultimate samadhi but this is a prelude a preparation for reaching that state so that's why kshina vrittihi abhijadasya eva manehi so i gave this example when these vrittis and vasanas and samskaras become weakened then our mind or chittam becomes a crystal clear diamond a, a crystal that is clean and clear and the clarity of the crystal uh, decides the purity or the of the clarity of reflection of whatever it tries to reflect so when our mind becomes completely emptied of all vrittis then it becomes like a, a high quality diamond or a high quality crystal and then as uh, as the commentator say elsewhere i said mentioned yesterday tatstha then mind becomes still stable and then this dharana will help us to achieve the sthiti padam that you mentioned in the 35th sutra so you have to refer to the previous sutras then only we'll be able to fully make out the correct meaning so the 35th sutra if you remember 
विषेवदी व प्रवृत्ति ही उत्पन्न मानस स्थिति निबंधिनी दैट बी डिस्क्राइब एंड एक्सप्लेन इन द लाइट ऑफ व्यास कमेंट्री एंड ऑल्सो वाजस्पति कमेंट्री एंड ऑल्सो तत्वैशारथी ही रेंडे सो विषेवदी व प्रवृत्ति ही उत्पन्न द प्रवृत्ति व विशोगा ज्योतिषमदी प्रवृत्ति उत्पन्न मानस स्थिति निबंधिनी what means is so pravritti here means in a prakrishta vritti it is a special kind of vritti so when all these vrittis are gone satvika vritti alone remains and satvika vritti helps you to become or uh, to make your mind chittam and abhijata mani means high quality crystal perfectly clean and capable of reflecting everything in its totality so this pravritti is a technical term of course that is used only in this yoga context because pravritti has got a different meaning in vedanta is entirely different pravritti means uh, pravritti dharma nivritti dharma pravritti means you plunging into uh, uh, social uh, domestic responsibilities i mean Uh, taking care of the welfare of society one's own individual family and so on that is the meaning of pravritti but here the pravritti has got a different meaning prakrishta vritti means uh, is a special kind an exotic an, an exotic or exalted kind of vritti is called prakrishta vritti and when this happens sthiti nibandhini manasaga sthiti nibandhini mind becomes steady and stable that is the implication of this particular word used in this uh, in this uh, particular sutra that is 41st sutra tatstha and then next one is tatanjana means uh, the quality uh, of being tinged means when it becomes clean and crystal clear then it can reflect the color of purusha he can uh, completely absorb what he tries to learn that's why i mentioned earlier this is something to do with the the whole dynamics of uh, concentration as we understand you know concentration means actually we are not able to concentrate on things we are not able to remember what we try to concentrate we often we forget because our chittam or mind as not being able to completely reflect or absorb what we try to understand and remember so an important thing and this is a special reference to uh, spiritual subjects that's a very important thing we should not get away with the impression that uh, any kind of memory as something to do with spirituality not at all our human mind has a natural tendency to remember everything in this empirical world that you have to remember why because you know normal situation all the five senses naturally drag the mind to its external objects so if you if a glutton walking in the streets lined with uh, let's say eateries restaurants uh, maybe some wonderful sweets the food items displayed in the in the shops a glutton will not forget what he has seen in the sweet shop or a bakery because the moment he sees that the idea of eating tasting and his own enjoyment of eating that will come to his mind so all the related thoughts will naturally help him to remember the color the size and maybe the price of the particular bread or sweet or whatever he has seen in the in the shop but the same person may not be able to remember a sattu a spiritual idea that's because he has got tamasika vritti and rajasika vritti he has not developed this pravritti prakrishta vritti a sattvika vritti as we develop sattvika vritti we are able to connect with understand and remember and relate higher spiritual ideas 
so that's the implication of this second term is tadanjanata so tadanjanata means the the mind or chittam becoming clean enough clear enough to observe and reflect higher spiritual ideas that's the meaning here so and then tadanjanata samapatti this is the higher concentration that we are discussing now after this the next uh, uh, sutra that is we will take up tatra shabdartha jnana vikalpaihi sankirna sabitarka samapatti the first sabitarka samapatti is my uh, medis a penultimate to nirvikal nirvitarka samapatti is mentioned here now <clears throat> a, a state of samapatti or samadhi in this shabda artha and jnana the shabda means the word the sound artha means what it indicates or implies and also the cognitive faculty the awareness the knowledge that comes out of this mixing of shabda the word and its meaning these three come together that is among the samapatis that which is mixed that is where there is a mutual identification of shabda the word and what the word refers to the referent and the concept and the knowledge as our awareness they get mixed up then it is called sabitarka samapatti shabda means is external vibration bahya spandana means shabda when when we try to know something the name the word equivalent the audio equivalent that's the first thing that comes to us and then through memory or relation or association with previous knowledge we try to get an idea of what the particular word implies refers to and then the pratyaya pratyaya means the awareness in our mind so hear a sound hearing a sound understanding what it implies and what the word implies is this particular object that awareness when these things are combined it is called Uh, savitarka samapatti so first of all we should remember uh, that that you know, we already mentioned this the 17th sutra of this chapter vitarka means concentration on external sthula gross object and vichara this, this we discussed the 17th mantra vichara means concentration on sukshma and here the word tatra so the tatra is part of the sutra it means tasu samadhi su samadhi mean this samadhi stage things get mixed up there is sankirnata and then it is called uh, this uh, sabitarka samadhi means the word shabda is imp- its implied meaning artha and is cognitive equivalent jnana when they constitute this triangle of meaning then it is called sabitarka samapatti this is what uh, uh, the, the, the elementary meaning now here a few things to be remembered normally all human experiences can be called a mixture of these three that is shabda the word equivalent and then its implied meaning and jnana now here we should remember at this first stage of samapatti the sabitarka they get mixed up but there is a higher samadhi where your cognition takes place at this stage of samadhi but you transcend this mixing up 
you are able to cognize and understand things for themselves without mixing up of this shabda artha and this uh, cognitive faculty well uh, let's say i shall try to explain this in the common sense language let's say suppose you uh, let us say you come to know of an animal or an object or a furniture whatever it is the furniture has got a name and you know that name indicates the shape of a furniture the objects and you mix up so when the word is heard or read immediately you understand the particular word indicates this particular object and then the awareness that this word actually implies this particular object now this is the normal world of understanding and cognition now in this experience there is a problem that's why it is called a vikalpa it is not real because according to yoga the real thing is beyond the name what the name implies and the knowledge about it and when you are able to connect that knowledge then you are able to know everything in this world we are not able to know everything in this world because our knowledge gets localized by one word you say let us say this is a wrist watch or this is a pencil so the pencil name the object pencil and also the understanding so this they get mixed up but suppose you can connect with that objects independently without these things mixing up in other words pure awareness minus its shabdartha dimension pure awareness is called prajna and vedanta in the vedantic language you can find many of these ideas are explained in a much more comprehensive logical language shankaracharya's commentary what you see uh, you, you you may heard of this some of you must have heard those who read the autobiography of a yogi or those who have read the uh, works of paul brunton uh, in search of secret in india many books you often you find you read about some great yogis who knew everything uh and they could understand everything uh, so. now one interesting thing is uh, uh, as a part of the yogic evolution you are able to live in a world which is undivided which is not divided into past present and future so time is experienced to be a single dimensional entity right now we understand time in terms of past present and future we know very well that there was really no past when the past was real we experienced only as a present similarly when the so called future comes we are not going to experience future as future we are going to experience only as a present so what we now call future is something that is not going to be experienced as future that we are going to experience only as present so if the present is only reality why do you divide the why do you draw a line of demarcation between the past and present and the present and future so you find a single dimension this is with regard to space also then see very often you know space and time are interrelated something that exists elsewhere in another time we can we think it, it was like that something that is not existing right now it will be like that but suppose we can think of of a dimension of awareness which is not this uh, not divided into past present and future then there is only single space only now only the present in buddhist call it the eternal present the eternal present this is frequently used uh, in again uh, in a, a rather not in a very 
uh, respectable way in the in the counseling and also in pep talks in management science you can find people you you believe now today right now but this is not something that can be taken in its most elementary meaning in reality present is the only reality that's an important thing to remember so if we can understand things without demarcating into past present and future and without demarcating into shabda artha and the specified cognition then you get the non specified unspecified the universal cognition an object is an object but you don't see it through empirical eyes then it is an object it is a pure awareness of that object when you come to empirical level then say this is a glass this is a cup this is a pencil this is a pen etc but as pure awareness it is called prajna as i mentioned in vedanta it is used in that sense when you reach that level of awareness then you know everything that's what we are going to discuss in the coming sessions so this description of the savitarka samapatti is a prelude to that higher concentration that's why as i mentioned this experience of objects mixing up with shabda artha and jnana the word and the object that a particular word indicates and the knowledge related to the association of the word and its corresponding object that is called jnanam when you don't mix up then there is a reality if you mix up it is only a shadow of the reality so you see i know this book the knowledge of the book is a remove no the book the pure knowledge that knowledge is pratyam that is what is what will what is that is the result of nirvitar uh, nirvitar ka samadhi the higher samadhi where a knowledge alone exists knowledge unconnected with any specific objects you know it is this vikalpa or this what do you may call this the it is not a reality but is a uh, it is something that can be called a shadow of the reality it is this vikalpa experience of samadhi matram that patanjali calls savitarka samadhi samadhi means samadhi matram means kind of concentration and as i mentioned you know it is not genuine it is not the real experience because it is based on knowledge from books knowledge means you read something you know just like what is this this object is it this is name and that name indicates this object so also you can get from scriptural books or philosophical books your knowledge that knowledge is important but this is shabda jnana sangirnata as you call that's a that's used in this sutra shabda shabda is shabda jnana vikalpa ki sangirna sangirna means mixed up shabda artha and jnana mixed up if we if we can understand it without mixing up shabda artha jnana then we'll be able to know everything in fact that is the psychological and spiritual explanation of what you may call telepathy telecommunication wherever you read about uh, yogis or spiritual persons or anyone in, able to understand things without the instrumentality of something then it is actually the real knowledge without shabda artha jnana sankirna i mean without mixing up shabda artha and jnana when you mix up your knowledge becomes specific the knowledge of this time this this the restores the furniture and so on but knowledge itself when detached from that object and from that word the artha and 
Shabda, that knowledge is universal. A yogi is able to connect with this universal dimension of pure awareness because he is able to go beyond this sankirna. I mean, he is able to go beyond, he is able to transcend this mix, mixing up of Shabda, Artha, and Jnana. That explains the unique powers of mind that you may have read yogis display in knowing things which are, you know, which, 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 which may be surprising, but it is not a result of, it's not a result of effort as we understand it. Normally when we, see, I, I, I studied a lot, I read a number of books, a lot of time you worked and hard and studied, took notes and so on. Now that may work okay. Uh, natural understanding of empirical objects is quite natural. A child will be able to remember the names of toys and chocolates and candies. Perfectly okay. But even a grown-up man will be able to remember, a grown-up man working, he's a mechanic will be able to remember a lot of things related to his regular work. It is not a yoga knowledge. But because anything belongs to the empirical world, we are connecting at the human level using our mind and the five senses of perception. With eyes and mind you see things, ears and mind we hear things, and sense of touch and mind you touch things, with the sense of smell and mind you smell things, and sense of taste and mind you taste things. That everyone can do. But any kind of higher knowledge is possible only when we reach this level of Sattvika Vritti, which is called Pravarti. And when this happens, when it, uh, when it reaches the highest level of uh, uh, growth and evolution, then you are able to understand things without mixing Shabda, Artha, Jnana. So this is the uh, normal interpretation of this particular sutra. If you want to ask questions, I can clarify, try to clarify during interaction. The next sutra is Smurdi Parishuddho Surupa Shunne Sati Arthama Artha Nirbhasa Nirbitarka Nirbitarka Samadhi Samapati is explained here. When our memory, that is Smurdi Parishuddho means it is Sadi Sattami is a grammatical term. When smurdi or memory becomes pure, when does our memory become pure? When it is not fixated or obsessed or limited by one particular object and its name and understanding. Sabdartha Jnana. That's an important thing to remember. When our mind transcends the Sabdartha Jnana dimension, that is a kind of equal triangle, word, what it indicates, that is called artha, and the knowledge that comes out of it, jnana. This is the world of empirical cognition understandings, what you may be called scholarship. Now, when this is gone, this murdi memory becomes pure. Well, to give an example, what do you remember best? Let us say, suppose you are working hard in your room, reading books and everything, you may not remember. But suppose you are sitting in a train or a plane, you are relaxed, and you read something, it may not be very important, that you will remember. Why? Because when you are relaxed, your memory becomes more pure. When you work in a hurry, so many memories come together, completing one bit the other. So, when we are relaxed, our memory becomes a little more pure. That's a smurdi parishuddhu, surupa shunni. When memory becomes purified, purified means purified, purified or, or emptied of the vikal past that we mentioned in the previous sutra. Sabdartha, Jnana, Sankirna, the mixing up of word is referred in, the, in, in, in implied meaning, implied object 
and the knowledge that comes out of it is called vikalpa so when our chitta mind becomes fully purified of all these vikalpas then what happens then the chitta becomes as it is lost in true nature that vastu shri there is a word you surupa shunya then chitta appears as if it has lost its true nature and then what happens then surupa shunya sati eva artha nirbhasa sabitar then what happens then the referent alone shines its true nature this uh, a, an example i mentioned just now when you are sitting relaxed somewhere don't worry don't not worrying about anything totally relaxed and you read something you listen to something that we remember because when you are relaxed all the conflicting memories everything is completely gone so what you read now read at that moment what you think at that moment you will remember that's because mind loses its natural tendency to be always in a state of fluctuation or uh, conflicts at that time what happens is you, you, you will you be able to uh, completely observe what you try to observe at that time the chitta mind becomes like a crystal clear diamond that is abhijadasya mani in the previous sutra you read when a mind becomes like a pure crystal then it's able to reflect everything so if a pure crystal is brought near a red flower the crystal becomes completely appears to have become red in color that's because the crystal has lost its own natural character appears to have become that is i mean appears it is actually without any color pure crystal there is no dust nothing so it is it, is, it has no special color of its own so when it comes and placed very close to a red flower it completely reflects the redness of the red flower and then what happens that uh, crystal completely uh, gets uh, absorbed in the redness of the object that is nearby similarly when our chitta or mind becomes completely purified of all the vikal pass all the fluctuations then what really happens is it is able to remember itself and that state is called nirvitarka samapatti in other words this particular sutra describes the direct experience of the real nature in fact that's the only way we can correctly understand anything in this world so clarity of perception and understanding happens when our mind as it lost its so natural tendency of always being in a state of fluctuation mind is defined as sankalpa vikalpaatmika antaka navurti mana that is the real nature that's how mind is often understood in more or less in yoga and also in vedanta sankalpa means suppose you see an object in front of you let's say it is uh, actually it is a pillar maybe if there is not enough light you may suspect and you may think in your mind yet yeah, it could be a human being or you may suppose it may be something else a ghost so superstitious people may think that way and when you reach the object you understand it is only a pillar so in your mind there were two thought currents conflicting thought currents one is sankalpa or oh, it is a human being and of course you may also think it may be something else another thought current sankalpa and vikalpa comes another probable possibility you may imagine when you reach the place you understand it is only 
പില്ലർ ന ദിസ് എ നാച്ചുറൽ സ്റ്റേറ്റ് ഓഫ് ഹ്യൂമൻ മൈൻഡ് സങ്കല്പ വികൽപാത്മിക അന്ത്യകരണ വൃത്തിക്ക് മൈൻഡ് ഈസ് നത്തിങ് ബട്ട് ബട്ട് നെയിം ഓഫ് എ ഫ്ലക്ഷ് എ ഫംഗ്ഷൻ ഓഫ് വൃത്തി മൈൻഡ് ഈസ് നോട്ട് എൻ എൻറ്റിറ്റി റിമെമ്പർ മൈൻഡ് ഈസ് നോട്ട് എൻ എൻറ്റിറ്റി മൈൻഡ് ഈസ് ദ നെയിം ഓഫ് ദ ഫംഗ്ഷൻ എ പെറ്റ് ദ മൈൻഡ് യു കോൾ ഇറ്റ് മൈൻഡ് ബിക്കോസ് എറ്റ്സെറ്റ് ഓഫ് വൃത്തി ഈസ് ഫംഗ്ഷൻ ഇൻ എ പെർട്ടിക്കുലർ ഫോ പെർട്ടിക്കുലർ മാനർ ഇൻ പെറ്റ് പെർട്ടിക്കുലർ ഫാഷൻ then it is called mind mana in sanskrit and the same object the same thing is called buddhi or intellect when you reach the object and you understand you are convinced that it is not a human being it is a pillar nisyatmika antakarnavrti buddhi intellect so what i meant was mind's natural tendency is to be always in a state of fluctuation wavering so that's why smriti parishuddho surupa shunne sati so when uh, this memory smriti means memory parishuddho means when it becomes pure parishuddho sati it is a it is a particular grammatical form called sati saptami the many kinds of sati saptami sat so when memory becomes purified of all fluctuations we call past what happens then actually chitta appears as if it has lost its natural original state that's called surupa shunne surupa means its own natural state it is gone that's why you know yoga bhasha says പാഠഭേദ സ്വരൂപ ശൂന്യ ഇവ ദിസ് അനദർ വേ ഓഫ് ഇൻ്റർപ്രിറ്റിംഗ് ദി സൂത്ര വിച്ച് ഗോഡി ടു യോഗ ഭാഷ സ്ലോത്ര യോഗ ഭാഷ എനിവേ ദസ് നോട്ട് വെരി ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ്റ് നൗ ആൻഡ് ദെൻ വാട്ട് ഹാപ്പൻസ് സച്ച് എ മൈൻഡ് ക്യാൻ കംപ്ലീറ്റ്ലി റിഫ്ലക്ട് വാട്ട് ഇറ്റ് കോഗ്നൈസസ് ബിക്കോസ് ഇറ്റ് കോഗ്നൈസസ് വിതൗട്ട് ദി അസോസിയേഷൻ ഓഫ് മിക്സിങ് അപ്പ് ഓഫ് വേൾഡ് is referent and the knowledge that means sabda artha and jnana then it is called nirvitarka so great yogis who are able to remember great things profound things for long time they are able to do that because there they have developed this prajna remember prajna in yoga literature means something else that we are going to discuss in the coming sessions here prajna means pure knowledge in the vedantic tradition you know non objectified awareness you may call it non objectified awareness normally all the awareness that we have is objectified we use the word knowledge only when we mean knowledge of something we don't use knowledge in this universal dimension when you use the word universal dimension knowledge it's only atma jnanam only so all knowledge that we use is only specified or objectified knowledge knowledge with a direct reference to an object a particular object and that again becomes sabitarka when it mixes up with sabda artha and jnana at the same time when this mixing up is gone the knowledge becomes pure why because the memory becomes pure smriti parishuddho sadi that's the meaning in the sutra then what happens artha matra nirbhasa nirvitarka that's the meaning we will continue discussion of these sutras which are slightly complicated but i'll try to explain also in the light of the commentaries you can uh, you are most welcome to ask questions uh, you should remember as padanjali wrote uh, sutras so alpaksharam asandigdam saravat vishuto mugam astobam anavadyam cha sutram sutra vidho vidho that is the definition of sutra according to padma purana it means a sutra is a pithy word a very brief statement so it should be very few words loaded with meaning 
and when you understand it properly of course you have no doubts but it is capable of expanded interpretations so that is a sutra so it requires some uh, uh, efforts so we should not uh, we should not worry if we are not able to understand everything in one reading okay thank you we can have interaction most welcome Pranam Swamiji. Yeah. So Swamiji in Vedanta, we also say that when when you look at the world devoid of Nama and Rupa, then it's nothing but Brahman. And in in this class, we talked about that when you look upon knowledge devoid of Shabda and Artha, then it's pure knowledge. Are the two related concepts? No, 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 never, never. We should never read Vedanta. Advaita Vedanta into yoga, totally different. Yoga is, as I mentioned earlier, yoga is just an analysis of human mind uh, in relation to this empirical world, and it is yoga is a system of philosophy which accepts the reality of this empirical world. Veda Advaita Vedanta tells you that this empirical world is. Essentially unreal in the sense it is only relatively real. It's <coughs> meaning of mithya too. So we should not mix up. Uh, the language of the vocabulary of yoga is different from the vocabulary of Advaita Vedanta. They're totally different things. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Swami. Yeah. No question, Bobby. You normally begin some discussions. Hello, Maharaj. Yeah. Maharaj, uh, I had a question. It is probably not directly related to yeah. what we were talking about today. Yeah. But um, I was reading up some uh, comparison between uh, the uh, Buddhist ideas and the Vedantic ideas sometime this week. And one thing that stood out for me was how uh, there was a talk about how um, these uh, vrittis in Buddhism are not translated uh, from uh, so from different people. It's like energy which just comes through and uh, creates new. Um, these vrittis come to, together and then they they, they form. Uh, they form new identities which might not directly correspond to older identities. While in Vedanta we have this concept of uh, uh, the vasanas of a certain person specifically being derived from uh, those of um, the same person in a, in a previous birth. And uh, when you are talking about this hammer today, this again like uh, this uh, the mallet, this again came back to my mind. So I want to understand what is the uh, Vedantic explanation behind the logic of this? Why uh, we have a single personality taking the uh, the, the deeds and, and the uh, effects of the deeds into a next janma? And why is uh, yeah. how is it different from? Yeah, yeah. Vedanta tells you that so long as we are not spiritually enlightened, we have to go through these multiple cycles of what you call karmic cycles of lives, death and reincarnation, again this continuation of this wheel of existence. So long as we are not uh, enlightened, and enlightened means realization, of our uh, uh, transcendental identity, we are beyond mind, mind, body, body, mind, complex, and so on. That more or less agree with the Buddhist view of Nirvana. So Buddhism also uh, almost totally accepts the Vedantic or yogi, uh, the yoga concept of evolution or cycles of lives. For example, according to Buddha, there is called the Praditya Samudpada, twin link <coughs> change, which uh, roughly explains the interconnectedness of the past life, the present life, and the future life, and also the continuation of these uh, cycles of life. 
ಟಿಲ್ ಯು ಗೆಟ್ ನಿರ್ವಾಣ ಆ ನಿರ್ವಾಣ ಈಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮೊರೋರ್ ಲೆಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಬೇಸ್ ಇಟ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಕ್ವಿರೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ನಿರ್ವಾಣ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ಸೊ ವೇರ್ ನಿರ್ವಾಣ ಯೂಸ್ ಇನ್ ಗೀದ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ನಿರ್ವಾಣ ಮೃಚ್ಛದಿ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಯು ಫೈಂಡ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ಬುದ್ಧಿಸಮ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ರಿಯಲೈಸ್ ದ ಟ್ರೂತ್ ಆಫ್ ದುಃಖ ವೆನ್ ಯು ರಿಯಲೈಸ್ ದೆರ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ರೀಸನ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ದುಃಖ ದಿಸ್ ಎ ಕಾಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆರ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ವೇ ಔಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ರಿಯಲೈಸ್ ದ ವೇ ಔಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದುಃಖ ಇಸ್ ನಿರ್ವಾಣ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅಟೈನಬಲ್ ಬೈ ಡಿವೆಲಪಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಅಷ್ಟಾಂಗ ಡಿಸಿಪ್ಲಿನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸಮ್ಯಕ್ ಸ್ಮೃತಿ ಸಮ್ಯಕ್ ಆ ಜೀವ ಸಮ್ಯಕ್ ಸಂಕಲ್ಪ ಸಮ್ಯಕ್ ಸಮಾಧಿ ಸಮ್ಯಕ್ ವಾಕ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೋ ಆನ್ ದರ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈ ಡಿಸಿಪ್ಲಿನ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಸಮ್ಯಕ್ ಮೀನ್ ದ ರೈಟ್ ರೈಟ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ರೈಟ್ ಸ್ಪೀಚ್ ರೈಟ್ ಮೆಮೊರಿ ರೈಟ್ ಕಾಂಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ರೈಟ್ ಕಾನ್ಸಂಟ್ರೇಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೋ ಆನ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಡೆವಲಪ್ ದೀಸ್ ಏಟ್ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಟೀಸ್ ದೆನ್ ಯು ನ್ಯಾಚುರಲಿ ಅಟೇನ್ ನಿರ್ವಾಣ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಯು ಗೆಟ್ ಔಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ವೀಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ವೀಲ್ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಚುಲಿ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ ವೀಲ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಚಕ್ರಮ್ ಈಸ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಇನ್ ಬುದ್ಧಿಸ್ ಲಿಟ್ರೇಚರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ದಿಸ್ ವೀಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಂಸಾರ ದಟ್ ಶೋಸ್ ಅ ಬುದ್ಧಿಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ರೆಷನ್ ವೇದಾಂತ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಯೂಸ್ಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಯು ರಿಯಲೈಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ನಿರ್ವಾಣ Vedanta also says the same thing. So, we are now talking about the normal people who don't try to attain this. Yoga philosophy, on the other hand, it says that when you realize your true nature, then you, then you realize you are Purusha, you are not part of this Prakriti. And Prakriti is actually the source of all this evolution, embodiment, sufferings, connecting with the external world and so on. and when through prati prasava when you get back to your own true nature then you attain your true identity that you are purusha then you get out of this so that is the yoga equivalent yoga is a dualistic philosophy so <coughs> yeah thank you yeah thank you Thank you, Maharaj, for calling on me. I was muted, but I, I've also been fascinated by Sri Yogi's question, which is yeah, please, please. posited in the chat room, and he also has, un, un, has a hand raised. Yeah. He, actually, he, he asked about Brownian in motion, and if he can be unmuted, he can ask the question himself. Yeah, please, 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 sir. please, sir. Anam, yeah, uh, actually, uh, Brownian in motion is uh, not a question. It's just a comment about the physics uh, Uh, has this uh, uh, formulas that predict motion of objects that are hit uh, by random forces in different directions. Yeah. I, I think Swamiji explained it uh, in plain English when he was uh, commenting on the um, Yoga Sutra or some other place. Yeah. Yogi, it's, a, it's really a fascinating connection between the physical, uh, you know, academic approach and what uh, Swamiji was able to yeah. deposit himself. is a really amazing thing yeah uh, the scientific developments came uh, much later maybe 50 yeah. 60 yeah. years afterwards uh, pranam maharaj i have a question about uh, uh, the uh, smriti you mentioned the yeah. mind is uh, uh, not an entity it's just a function of purti and i'm at purti span the definition for smriti is a uh, Uh, anubhuta vishaya samtrovacha smriti yeah which means uh, this the um, uh, experiences are stored or uh, yeah. uh, retained yeah that implies there is a storehouse where these experiences are accumulated and uh, yeah. it's a persisting entity yeah uh, could you please explain the, yeah. uh, the concept of uh, being a only dynamic uh, yeah uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah you, you know right now we are we have just crossed the uh, uh, we have finished the uh, elaborate discussions on different kinds of dharana you know so this this particular state is the result of dharana so when you reach this level of dharana uh, then what happens all the smrdis previous smrdis uh, become pure so you know there is a close connection between between smrdi and vritti really speaking you know. so smriti is also is one of the vrittis actually vrittaya panchataya you know 
so there in the the beginning itself you find um, in the list of uh, vrittis smriti nidra you know but, all uh, all the pramana vipriya vigalpa nidra smrta in the last is smriti smriti is a vritti after all so uh, we remember things because our previous actions previous experiences uh, that deposit the uh, uh, they, they, they deposit this memories and vrittis in our system is called karmasya which will unfold in course of time in every life cycle it can unfold so through the practice of dharana when you reach that higher level of dharana and dhyana when you reach that level of nirvitarka samapatti what happens you know all these vrittis become empty that is kshina vritti the previous sutra means vrittis become kshina means just like uh, uh, like seeds become burnt seeds they are not they cannot be really called seeds because they cannot sprout so at that state smriti smriti parishuddho he means they remember it is not smrdeka parishuddhi it is not the purity of smriti it is the emptying of smriti something gets cleaned off cleared off emptied off smriti that's the meaning here it is not purity of smriti rather it is purified of smrutis means just like a place uh, gets purified of all dirt means that there is no more dirt purtis are completely gone that should shina vritti the previous sutra said that so that is the implication here when you reach that state then we are able to cognize things without this mixing up of the shabda artha and jnana and when we can actually understand things without mixing up shabda artha jnana we actually go beyond the normal uh, concepts of human cognition because normal human cognition is possible only in the context of context of shabda artha and jnana a word is meaning is implied meaning and the awareness that bring along with that when we go beyond that pure awareness comes so frequently many of the commentators with strong advaitic leanings they try to link these sutras with some kind of advaitic concept of prajna prakashayana jnana we call that so there are at some higher level you can see they are all interconnected but uh, but at this stage we have not reached that state so here remember you know smriti parishuddho means when the chittam becomes pure purified of emptied of all smritis why smriti is actually the last of vrittis pramana vipriya vigalpa nidra smritaya purvrtaya panchataya vrittis are five fold smriti is the last and fifth one that's also gone then you you can cognize things that is why uh, when i gave this example when our mind is in a very relaxed mood when we are not thinking of anything that means there are not many vrittis and memories agitating in our mind at that time if you read something you are likely to remember that that's important in the midst of many other things if you read or some, read or hear something you may forget it but you are relaxed you are sitting in an easy chair somewhere you are alone uh, come, then you read something you hear something that you may remember why because there are no agitating vrittis and smritis i mean this um, thought currents and the memories uh, rush me to the mental system then you remember things that's the idea behind so every one of the sutras can be stretched to one end and you can uh, somehow connect it to some normal everyday life context of our human experience uh, so mahanand uh, uh, this uh, smriti when by the time smritis are cleared up uh, of the mind uh, but is uh, nidra also nidra is also one of the uh, uh, vrittis 
it comes before yeah, yeah, is yeah. it also not <laughs> no no you won't be you won't you won't you won't lose your ability to go to sleep that's the meaning nidra is called a vritti because um, in sleep sleep here means not deep sleep but in normal uh, dream or other state in deep sleep you don't accumulate uh, new vrittis but you don't lose old vrittis so uh, in uh, of course in deep sleep this vritti i had a good sleep that is there so in sleep also we accumulate is dreams uh, all these can create vrittis and deposit vrittis in our mental system so in that sense nidra is called a vritti uh, it doesn't mean that we will be we, our ability to sleep will be lost not at all but it means is all the vrittis accumulated through sleeping times till now they will be emptied mind will be emptied of all of them that's it yeah. So we see. Yeah. This is Jyoti. It seems from all this analysis of yoga sutras, it's like a physician's analysis of the human body, where anatomically we analyze and say this is the brain and this is the bone and this is the bone marrow. So everything in the thought process, how it arises, how it's analyzed, it seems like the total understanding of of functioning. is what's explained in this uh, yeah yoga sutras and um, this yeah. so when we sometimes talk about say let's let's assume i'm not been to africa but somebody gives me a map and gives me pictures of africa it still just stays in the mind but until i see africa and experience it i want to realize it so the british that you have explained and this of course it's all the normal thought process which is very well analyzed by these yoga sutras so whenever we have a thought or we have an action i guess we can analyze it from the yoga sutra point of view and see how we are applying this or our yeah. action why did we do this action why did we react this way and our behavior will fit into one of the models of what you have described yeah you know that's true so yoga sutra we should the we should not make the mistake of me every day analyzing and minutely analyzing and studying and making our own assessment of our mind you people will go crazy we should not do that this is an important thing to remember many people they work very hard analyzing their own mind their own thoughts their own emotion that will be totally dangerous it even can lead to some kind of insanity the main thing is we should know that the nature of the mind is to throw up these conflicting vrittis vasanas and samskaras once we keep that awareness in our mind we won't be very much affected by the fluctuations and wavering of the mind that's the only purpose of studying yoga sutra this is important of course from an academic perspective i don't think Uh, modern psychologists have fully discovered uh, the the depth of spiritual psychology uh, of the yoga sutra literature i don't think so for many reasons one reason is the traditional commentaries are not directly uh, available for close analysis by people who are not trained in sanskrit and yoga sutra and also in modern psychology so a traditional sanskrit pandit studying yoga sutra writing a commentary will not be able to bring out the these aspects of yoga sutra literature uh, because he is trying to understand yoga sutra in the yoga sutra tradition and modern psychologists who have not studied yoga sutra from a traditional teacher also will lose the real implication he will try to equate something and he will he won't be able to for example understand the meaning and the implication of samskara which is a unique contribution of vyasa he won't be able to correctly understand samskara he will think it is only memory samskaras murtis they will dismiss as memories 
but they are not memories there are certain irresistible forces in our own mind which actually function which drive us in one direction whether we like it or not and even if you take a medicine to forget it it will come back so pip the main problem is the some of the concept like karma shaya the deeper layers of samskaras where they remain and they try to manifest in different age cycles so for example when a when a person grows in certain when he reaches a particular age certain samskaras from previous life will begin to manifest at another age another set of samskaras will begin to manifest so these ideas may not be clearly recognized in their full seriousness and uh, the uh, and maybe accuracy by modern psychology and traditional yoga interpreters they will use the word samadhi that's all which a word a wonderful word no doubt but in our con- dharana what it means you have to connect a bridge between these ancient times to our own age our own time so that is a difficult task so anyway that's uh, that's what uh, that was i all that i was doing was make an effort in that direction to what extent is being fruitful is for you to judge so thank you for all the questions now and we had a very fruitful discussion thank you namaskar ओम शांति 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 हरि ओम तत्सु श्री राम कृष्णापणमस्तु